In the course of this hearing today and the next of this hearing session, which starts today, the parties will discuss on the existence of sufficient evidence to sustain a conviction. And this hearing was convened pursuant to a procedure first set forth in the chambers, and I quote, order on the further conduct of the proceedings, which was dated 9 February 2018. And the filing is filing number 1124. This order was issued following the completion of the testimony of the last witness of the prosecutor who appeared in front of this court on 17 and, 9, and 19 January 2018. It is witness P564. Therein, in the order, the chamber instructed the prosecutor to file a trial brief illustrating her case and detailing the evidence in support of the charges. And this trial brief was submitted on 19 March 2018, 20, 2018, and it is filing number 1136. The goal of this exercise was to obtain from the Office of the Prosecutor a brief explanation what, in their view, after having heard all their own evidence, they considered they had proven in respect to the charges vis-a-vis -vis what they had announced they wanted to prove in their pre-trial brief filed before the opening of the trial. On 23 April 2018, the defense for Mr. Bagbo and the defense for Mr. Blegoudet filed their observations to the trial brief. Both defense teams expressing the view that the prosecutor has not presented enough evidence to warrant a conviction. In their observations, they also indicated that they intended to bring motions challenging the adequacy of the prosecutor's evidence, in which they would, if granted, ask for a full acquittal on all charges. And I'm referring to filings number 1157 for Mr. Bagbo and 1158 for Mr. Bligoudi. On 4th June 2018, the chamber then issued the second order on the further conduct of the proceedings. It is filing 1174, ordering the defense for Mr. Bagbo and the defense for Mr. Blegoudi to file non later than 20 July 2018, and I quote, concise and focused submissions on the specific factual issues for which in their view, the evidence presented by the prosecutor is not sufficient to sustain a conviction and in respect of which, accordingly, a full or partial judgment of acquittal would be warranted." End of quote. The Office of the Prosecutor and the legal representative of victims were ordered to file their responses with the same concise and focused modalities by 27 August 2018. In that order, that's a second order, the Chamber also decided to hold a hearing starting on 10 September 2018, which, following requests by the prosecutor and the legal representative of victims for additional time to submit their responses 
was postponed until today, 1st October 2018. And this is filing 1189. On 23 July 2018, the defense for Mr. Blegoudé filed submissions of 300, altogether 311 pages, filing 1198, and the defense for Mr. Bagbo uh, uh, of a filing of uh, 498 pages. It is filing 1199. In their submissions, both defense teams asked the chamber, extensively arguing, to declare the lack of sufficient evidence to support their charges and to acquit both accused. On 10 September 2018, the legal representative of victims and the prosecutor filed their responses, filing numbers 1206 and 1206. Seven of respectively 101 and 1093 pages. Both the defense for Mr. Bagbo and the defense for Mr. Blegoudé immediately reacted in their filings of 12 and 4 September 2018, filing 1208 and one, filing 1,211, respectively, arguing that the response of the prosecutor exceeded the scope of a response in both size and content and requested the chamber to reject it in limine. In the alternative, they requested to be granted additional time to prepare for an oral hearing and the defense for Mr. Bagbo requested also the written translation into French of the response of the, pros of the prosecutor. It is clear that if these requests were granted, it would have led to a long postponement of today's hearing and thus a delay of the proceedings as a whole. The second order envisaged a hearing where the parties and participants would have the possibility to illustrate and to complete their submissions and to respond to each other's submissions as well as to questions of the, of the chamber. In light of the features and the length of the documents submitted in execution of the second order, as well as of the request by both defense teams, it was therefore necessary for the chamber to clarify and adapt its subject matter and purpose. In an effort and with a view to balance the principles of fairness and expeditiousness of the proceedings, the decision issued on 20, the, uh, the chamber issued a decision on 21st September, filing 1212, in which it confirmed the hearing scheduled for today, and in so doing avoided any further delay, guaranteeing the expeditiousness of the proceedings, and ordered the prosecutor to orally respond to the defense request to submit the charges, to dismiss the charges in a concise and focused manner. The no case to answer motion should be fit into their procedural context, which is essentially to protect the rights of the accused and shape and focus the issues in the trial. I've just mentioned how this would work with respect to a submission of evidence regime. Unlike the ad hoc tribunals, this court has the Article 61 confirmation of charges procedure. This serves to protect the rights of the accused by ensuring that he or she is only committed for trial where the evidence discloses substantial reasons to believe that he or she committed the crimes charged. In the discretion of the trial chamber, a further filtering of the evidence may occur 
at the midway point in the trial to determine if the prosecution case, as it has actually been presented, is such as to warrant the continuation of the trial. Now, as I say, the Article 61 confirmation procedure serves to help focus the issues in the upcoming trial, given that the accused is committed on the basis of the charges confirmed. And it represents an important protection of the rights of the accused who's not put on trial unless there is sufficient evidence to warrant a trial. This may explain, in part, why other trial chambers of this court have not permitted no case to answer motions to be heard. But in any event, once the trial is engaged, then the burden of proof on the prosecution is the criminal standard of proof beyond reasonable doubt that the accused committed the crimes charged. And as I said, a further filtering of the evidence may occur at the midway point in the trial to determine if the prosecution case, as it has actually been presented, is such as to warrant the continuation of the trial. The test applicable to this determination we submit is the one I've been describing, and this approach we submit fits within the structure of the Rome Statute. To conclude, I said that this court has only limited experience with no case to answer motions. In the Ruto and Sang case, the trial chamber adopted the test I have described. However, a majority, not the whole, but a majority of that chamber, went further to evaluate the evidence in a way that was perhaps more suited to the end of the trial. And the majority did this due to the exceptional circumstances that arose in that case, where for various reasons, the majority thought the prosecution case was in tatters. This is not the situation here, where there is a volume of evidence that in our respectful submission should lead to only one result. The accused should be put upon their defense, and this trial should proceed to its conclusion with a determination on the merits of their guilt or innocence. If there is evidence that has been submitted and discussed before you, upon which any trial chamber acting reasonably could convict the accused, then these no case motions must be denied and this trial proceed to its conclusion on the merits. Thank you.